In this video, I'm going to be telling you which outsole is best and why. What is up, everybody, and welcome to 40 Runs, and probably our most well thought out, scientific, and uh, time it's taken video to make. Reason for that is because uh, I've been doing this video and putting this together since the autumn 2022. Now I know we have a low bar in terms of quality on this channel, so I'm trying to take up a notch uh, because I thought about this video last year and I thought to myself, actually this would make quite a good video because we don't tend to talk about in detail the outsoles on running shoes. Now the outsole for me is a really important part of the shoe, if not the most important, because of the different terrains that I run on. If you're new to the channel, I spend a lot of time down uh, canal and towpaths. I'm running in the Lee Valley, which are some areas of tarmac. I'm running up in the fields with buds, which are grass areas, and I'm doing like coaching sessions on tarmac and things like that. So I need a whole variety uh, of um, ability in my outsole, and that's it's a really key element of when I'm choosing a running shoe. Now outsoles are funny old things because if they get it, if they get it right. It, it makes a huge difference in a shoe, but if they get it wrong, it makes a disaster of a shoe. It really can impact the shoe so badly, I think more than we probably give it credit for. So for example, I, I reviewed a pair of Brooks last year. They were terrible, absolutely terrible in greasy conditions. And it, and it can become to a point some, in some shoes where it's actually dangerous to run in them in certain conditions and you shouldn't, shouldn't have to put up with that. So anyway, because this is going to be quite a long video, so just uh, bear in mind, you can skip along in the sections down below, okay? Because this is going to be quite a long-ish video, because we're going to be talking about different shoes, and I've picked certain shoes for certain reasons. Now, like I said, I I've been doing this since autumn, and the reason I've been doing this since autumn, putting this video together, is because we've had a lot of shoes coming through uh, the channel. So what I've been doing with those shoes, um, and I've picked certain shoes, because I've had them for long enough that they've done easily over 50 miles each um, so I can look at some of the wear and tear on them I know 50 miles is not a lot in some but that's the minimum okay so some of them have done well over that those like a pair of glide rides that have done easily over 100 and something miles so but I wanted long enough to be able to get enough mileage in the shoes to see about the wear and tear uh, also that I've been able to wear them on the different conditions that I've required, I'll come on to that in a second. So I just wanted to give myself enough time to get enough data to be able to put this video together and give you as much feedback, honest feedback as always, as possible. Okay, right, so how this works. I've uh, broken this down into a scoring system and I've taken five elements. Now for me, uh, it is uh, running on different surfaces. So I've got a uh, road, I've got um, grass, I've got greasy conditions. Now what that means is where it's been raining overnight or it's like got leaves on the path or yeah, it's a bit slippery. Maybe it's got some moss or we've, you know, it's just after some snow because we had some snow at one point uh, during this testing and that sort of stuff. So greasy conditions. I've then got towpath in there. So gravelly, not trail because none of these shoes are trail shoes, uh, but gravelly sections, bit of mud, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, so not like sweet, sweet tarmac. And then finally, the last section or last um, scoring point is on wear and tear. Now each of those sections, I'm gonna rate the shoes out of five, so that'll give us a total uh, score of 25, and I've rated the shoes accordingly. So that's the scoring system. Now the shoes, I've tried to focus in on daily trainers. I think there's um, obviously a different video we could do possibly about uh, race day shoes but I think daily trainers is the place I wanted to, uh, to look at for this because I think it's one of the most important parts of a daily trainer so again I've tried to uh, go for a big spectrum of shoes I've gone from uh, a variety of brands uh, one of the brands I've totally ignored and it's deliberate is Hoka because I think they've got one of the worst outsoles so I didn't bother wasting our time with that but I've tried to give a, a, a wide selection of running shoes for this test Okay, so here we go, let's get started. And the first shoe we're gonna talk about is this, the Brooks Ghost 15. Now, I appreciate that some of these models are gonna change. By the time you've seen this video, a lot of these models would have been changed, updated, uh, and whatever. But the fundamental point still is there because a lot of these midsole, um, midsole outsole compounds stay very consistent throughout the shoes. Yes, they tweak them, they change them a little bit, but in general, they're the same. 
Right, so first up, Ghost 15, um, most popular shoe from Brooks. We've got an incredible outsole, actually, in terms of um, wear and tear on it. If you look at it, it's designed deliberately to be uncoupled and give you some of that flex in the shoe, but ultimately, there is plenty of durability and plenty of grip on the shoe. Now, in terms of scoring, we've, go, we've gone for four out of five. Uh, for grass, four out of five. For greasy conditions, four out of five. And for the toe path, five out of five. And then for wear and tear, five out of five. Now, if you can see that, the wear on this shoe has been incredible. Now, that gives me, by my maths, 22. So a good score to start this video off with. Okay, next up is the A6 Nova Blast 3, one of the best and most popular daily trainers of last year, 2022. Again, these may have changed by the time you watch this, but in general, it's still the same. Now, with this shoe, we've got the AHA outsole. That's the uh, high abrasion rubber outsole from A6, okay? And this, again, is on their most popular daily trainer, I would say. Um, now, this, <laughs> get ready for this. On the road, I've given this a score of two. Um, on the grass, zero is dangerous. On the greasing conditions, one is pretty much dangerous. And on the toe pass, I'd give it a three. It holds its own, but if it gets muddy, it's dangerous. And in terms of wear and tear, I've given it a four, because it's not too bad, but you know, I've, I've blown it out all down the sides here. You can, well, you might not be able to see, but basically wear and tear, it's okay. It's, it's not too bad. There's a lot of miles put in this shoe, but overall, it's not brilliant. Now, by my reckoning, We've got a 10 there, so I think that says it all in terms of the outsole for the Nova Blast 3. That's a 10 out of 25. Next up, very popular shoe here at 40 Runs, the Glide Ride 3. Um, this is a long run shoe. Again, this is a shoe that's done well over 100 miles. Uh, the Glide Ride 3 is a fantastic shoe. The outsole is the AHA Plus, so it's the high abrasion, but it's the plus version of that. Now, we've done videos on the channel about the Glide Ride. I think Toby's one was like a 300 mile review or 200 mile review or something like that, and, and the outsole looked absolutely Fine, so wear and tear, I've given it a five out of 10 because it's a fantastic in terms of uh, wear. Um, in terms of the road, five out of 10, it's very good at the road. Uh, in grass, it's a two, it's not very good at grass. In greasing conditions, it's okay. Um, it's not brilliant, but it's okay. It's nothing like dangerous like the Nova Blast 3. And then on the tow path, I've given it a four because it holds its own down the tow path and I use and abuse these things down the tow path. So you'll see there's little bits of lumps and bumps out of it, but in general, this shoe, yeah, it's incredible. I remember wearing these on a trail run once. They're fantastic. So by my reckoning, that's about a 19 for the Glide Ride 3, so not too bad. Okay, I wanted to get a Nike shoe on, uh, and I thought, let's go for the Pegasus Turbo Nature. It's one of their most up-to-date shoes, let's call it. Uh, we've got this waffle design, uh, which is meant to help with traction rubber outsole on the shoe. Uh, I've gone for a five on the road, because it held its own very well on the road, actually. In fact, it's very grippy on the road, nice and sticky. Uh, on the grass, it was a two. Um, on the uh, greasy conditions, it was a two. It, it didn't really hold on onto the ground much, uh, or, or very well at all. Sorry, it's bad English. Um, on the toe path, it was a four. did very well down the toe paths. Um, and then overall, in terms of wear and tear, I've given it a four as well, because this, this waffle outsole is actually holding up really, really well. So I make that 17 for the Pegasus Turbo Nature. Now, quick interlude. Have you subscribed to this YouTube channel? No? Do me a favor, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and while you're at it, hit the thumbs up for this video, because it helps the algorithm, drives the video, and I just uh, will be forever grateful. Okay, next up, one of my favourites, the Speed 3. Sockany shoes, in general, have been terrible uh, for their outsoles. Oh, I've got that stuck to the bottom of it for some reason. Um, but they did improve it, I think, in the uh, third version of the Speed 3. We've got XT900 outsole uh, on this shoe. Now, uh, what's the best? Okay, look, I'll tell you what, let's just do the scoring. Let's stick to scoring, so otherwise this video's going to be eight hours long. So, road, I've given it a five, very good in the road. On the grass, it's actually not too bad, surprisingly well, uh, a three. Uh, two on the greasy conditions, Sockany shoes are terrible in greasy conditions. Uh, four on the toe pass, it seems to hold on very well. And overall wear and tear is a three, you, well, you, but I've basically burnt them out there. Uh, these are done again well over 100 miles, but overall it's not too bad. It's the actual foam that I've been taking lo uh, lumps and bumps out of, but yeah, you can't do anything about that. So that's 17 for the Speed 3.
Okay, another sock and shoe from the endorphin line, and that's the Shift 3, again with the XT900 outsole. Um, this is not very good at all uh, in those greasy conditions. Uh, five on the road, though. It's not too bad on the road. If it's dry and it's, you're on asphalt, it's real nice. Uh, we've got a three... Uh, on the grass is not too bad. It's surprisingly better than expected on the grass. Uh, one on greasy conditions is terrible in greasy conditions. Uh, four on the towpath seems to be okay. You've got these sort of depth there on the, uh, I won't call them lugs, but you've got some depth there which really does grab onto the gravel quite well. Um, and in terms of wear and tear, I've given it a three. It's not too bad. All things considered, it's held up pretty well. So I make that 16 out of 25, slightly less than the Speed 3, but overall, not too bad. Next up, we've got the Reebok Energy Float Ride, uh, a very, very good budget daily trainer, really good double tra um, daily trainer. Carbon, is it carbon infused? Uh, carbon rubber outside, I think they call it. It's an absolute monster, it really is. It's, uh, I'll come on to it a bit later on. But we've got five in terms of traction on the road, We've got three for the grass, that, you know, nothing's going to score high really on the grass. Uh, four for the greasy conditions, and we've got a five for the towpath and five for the uh, durability. This thing, in terms of durability, is incredible, considering the budget as well. You can get these for £50 in the UK. This thing is incredible in terms of durability. Right, and that's giving me 22 out of 25. Not bad, eh? Right, so next up is Puma. Now, I'm going to look at all the Puma shoes because we've had all the Puma shoes on the channel this year. So this is the Velocity 2, which has seen better days. So I've actually got a brand new pair of... Uh, where you going? Puma's just arrived. So I thought, actually, when we talk about Puma grip, we'll talk about these ones because at least, <laughs> at least they're clean and you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so Puma Grip, which is like a hardened rubber uh, on the bottom of most Puma shoes. So on this uh, channel, we've had the Deviate Nitro 2, we've had uh, Velocity 2, we've got here the uh, Nitro Turn, um, Fast R, oh, we've, had, we've had plenty of shoes on the channel this year from Puma, but they all come with this Puma Grip. As I said, it's like a hardened rubber with a decent amount of uh, depth, um, uh, tread, let's call it, but also coverage as well. They could definitely shave weight on these shoes, but they tend uh, not to do that. They tend to go for this thicker uh, rubber on the bottom of the shoes to, to help with the outside in terms of grip and, and durability and that sort of stuff. So marks out of 10 for Puma Grip. Uh, we're going to use this one as an example, uh, but this is, uh, in fairness, across the Puma shoes that I've had on the channel this year. We're going to be going 5 for the road. Yes, 5 out of 5. We're going 4 on grass. Five in greasy conditions, five down the towpath, and five for wear and tear. Now this beat up, knackered old Velocity 2 has still got, right, unbelievable amounts of grip left on it. There's hardly any wear on this shoe, and as you can see, it's done, it must have done 200 miles. It's absolutely destroyed. Right, I needed to get a pair of sketches on the channel, so we've got the Razor 4, and the Razor 4 has been improved with a load of coverage in terms of Goodyear rubber. Now, this and the Adidas have got the least miles on them. This has just gone over about 50 miles from my reckoning uh, now. Uh, so the wear and tear is a little bit, just, you know, take it with a pinch of salt. But we've got five in terms of the road, it's really sticky, really grippy. Two on the grass, it's not very good despite the overall coverage. Uh, we've got three in the greasy conditions. It's okay, I would say. It's not brilliant. I noticed it moving about a bit, but in some circumstances it was okay, so that's why I gave it a three. Uh, five on the towpath, really grippy and sticky down there. That's great, that's uh, perfect for me. And four in terms of wear and tear. But again, this is one of the newest shoes uh, in the rotation. Now that gives us 19 out of 25. Okay, we've got three shoes left. Next up, we're going Adidas. Uh, again, this is a newer shoe, so uh, bear in mind in terms of the wear and tear, we've got the SL. Now we've got the uh, rubber outsole, it just says rubber outsole on their website. Uh, I didn't get any other details than that. The uh, marks of the shoe are four on the road, uh, one on the grass. It, it, don't wear these on the grass, it's murder. Um, three in terms of greasing conditions, it's okay. I did notice it when I was running in these um, after the snow we had back in, when was that, December? Uh, all right, it was snow, but when it was like that mushy stuff, these were awful, but I'll give it a three. Uh, in terms of the toe path, giving it a four because it held on. There's it's some depth on these lugs. It's not too bad. Uh, and then four in terms of wear and tear, but again, limited view because of the mileage. It's only just crept up to 50 miles now. 
Okay, so my reckoning for the Adidas was, if my maths are right, 16 out of 25. We've got two New Balance shoes now coming your way. Um, so we've got the Rebel, very dirty Rebel 3. Now, this has got a, just a rubber outsole. I couldn't find anything else about it on the website. It just says rubber outsole, and you've got two placements there and then exposed fuel cell. Uh, I've given it a four for the road. It's okay on the road. Uh, there's not much in terms of thickness of the shoe. They try to keep the weight down. Uh, zero on the grass. It's useless on the grass. Don't bother trying to wear this thing on grass. It is dangerous. Uh, we've got a one in greasy conditions. It's awful. I tried, um, oh, sorry, I tried. When I was running a club session uh, we was going up a hill and it was after a greasy session I, I just felt myself sliding all over the place it was useless in greasy conditions um down the tow path three it's okay it's all right it's not brilliant but it's okay and wear and tell giving it a four it's burnt out here burnt out there but overall it's not too bad considering that it's pretty thin so the Rebel 3 is a 12. So New Balance shoe uh, 12 first shout for New Balance a not brilliant start and then the last one is the 1080 version 12. Okay, so one of my uh, all-time greats, I love this shoe. Uh, we've got a blown rubber outsole on the shoe. We've got a five out of 10, a five out of five for the road. I've got a two for grass, it's okay, it's all right. Uh, three on the greasy ignitions, the blown rubber does hold up all right. We've got four on the tow path, and then, get ready for it, on wear, zero. This thing for wear and tear is useless, absolutely useless unfortunately new balance on this occasion really let themselves down with the blow, uh, blown rubber now all right this shoe's got oh, i don't know 150 miles on it maybe more um probably more actually but look you can even see some of the things like hanging off of it it's not very good at all uh, i'll burn it out all down there burn it all out down there but anyway it is what it is um but yeah so zero for that 14 in total for the new balance 1080 version 12. Okay, guys, right, so that's all the scores, um, and it's pretty close in terms of um, first, second, and third. In sort of joint second place, we've got the uh, Reebok Float Ride, and we've got the uh, Brooks Ghost 15. Both came in with a score of 22. I've got to give a shout out to Reebok with this carbon um, rubber outsole. At £52, this shoe currently is, this is unbelievable value. Uh, this shoe really is unbelievable value and to get this amount of grip and to get this amount of wear and tear out of the outside on a 52 pound shoe is incredible. I've also got to show a bit of love to Brooks. Uh, I think I give <laughs> Brooks a real hard time on this channel. Um, obviously the shoe does look like it's from 1987 but the outsole on this thing is fantastic. It really is fantastic, people. Uh, in terms of wear and tear, in terms of grip, in terms of functionality, this is a great shoe in terms of the outsole. But there's only one winner. And the winner with 24 out of 25 is Puma Grip. So Puma running shoes that come with Puma Grip. If you're like me, looking for a shoe that does give you plenty of grip in mixed conditions, or a shoe that is gonna be durable over time, then you really need to look at Puma running shoes. Now Puma running shoes have everything, for, I think, for everybody. The Deviate Nitro 2 is, is I think one of the best shoes uh, of 2022. Uh, you've got the Fast R, which is not for everybody, but it is a um, half marathon shoe. You could maybe wear in a marathon. Um, you've got the Velocity Nitro 2, which is a great daily trainer. You've got shoes like this, which is just like for everyday use. You've got um, the Magnify, and, they, and they're going to be changing a lot of these shoes um, this year as well. So, you know, you're going to see new versions of these shoes coming out from Puma as well. So after all our scientific work and our testing and everything like that, it's clear that the Puma grip is king. It is, I think, unparalleled at the moment in terms of um, what it offers, value, grip, uh, and wear and tear. Um, so if you're looking for a running shoe in 2023, and you are swayed by you know, those factors that we've spoken about, then I think you need to look at the Puma running shoes.